no cantando, no sabe no tambor, senti meu amor, senti. Quanto tempo te mais a vida, senti outro temor a mim, senti meu amor, senti. Vai patando e vai cantando, vai dançando do batalho. Deixando o amor pra trás, voltando ele vai voltando A saudade mesmo mata, quem ela vai me matando Senti meu amor, senti, senti meu amor We work our whole lives. Our great grandparents, our grandparents, our parents were raised working and never destroyed anything. To survive, they practiced shifting cultivation. They cleared the forest and planted corn, rice, beans, cassava. One or two years later, they pulled out everything they had planted and let the land grow over. They went to another place and planted crops and did the same thing over again. Then, after five or six years, they would return and everything would have recovered, and they would plant crops again. That is what we do. For example, that hill you see over there was a cassava field, but now the forest has grown back. They would let the land recover and then go back and work the same land. What we did was a kind of land management that never destroyed anything. All that beautiful forest you see there, it wasn't the supposed ecologist who preserved it. No, it was us. We took care of it in the past and we still take care of it today. We never destroyed anything, we never harmed the environment. On the contrary, we have always lived here and all the beauty here was preserved by us, not by anyone from outside. Fisher folk don't only depend on the sea, they also depend on the forest, plant bananas, cassava, to work the land. In the mangroves there are oysters, mussels, there are fish and crabs, they provide us with our livelihood. The fisher folk go to the mangroves to take what they need to survive, but they don't destroy the mangroves. The mangroves are not destroyed by the fisher folk. We make this type of boat to survive, but this wood doesn't run out because when we cut down a tree to make a canoe, the seeds fall to the ground. When the tree is cut down, you can come back 30 days later and the seeds are sprouting, more than 800, a thousand seeds sprouting in the same place. We can cut down a tree to make a boat, and we are not destroying the forest. We are not creating ranches or fish farms. We only do it to build a boat to get around. I work with crafts, and I am a musician. I play the guitar, and that is my work. I learned it from my father. We got to the forest. We cut wood. We bring it back. I don't use a chainsaw, only an axe and a knife, and I went to split the logs and make craft. I have a chisel to shape guitars and fiddles. I work slowly, it takes me eight days to make a fiddle. A guitar takes 10 days. My life there, in the countryside, was planting crops. We organized collective work days to help each other. We played fandango, which was our way of paying the people who work with us. Since we had nothing to pay with, the dance was our payment. Fandango is a kind of dance, a kind of dance and music. I think it only exists here and in São Paulo. I play you a bit of music so you can hear it. Vai, vai.
fazia a paiole, fazia a roça, fazia aquele puxinho. My father planted crops. All of this was full of corn. He planted a lot of rice to eat and also to sell. He raised a lot of pigs. He sold cassava. They used to organize collective works days in the winter. Every Saturday, every weekend, 40 or 50 people would spend the day on the plantation. Men, women, children, teenagers, everyone working in the plantation. And they were paid with a dance. That was the tradition here. They would dance all night. They worked all day, happy, and danced all night, happy. People plant crops for themselves and also for the animals in the forest. All of the animals like what we plant. When they planted crops, there were more animals for us to hunt. When everybody planted crops, it was nice to walk through the forest because there were lots of animals. Now there are none. We planted crops. We planted and then we pulled out what we had planted and the forest grew back. <laughs> then we planted in another place and did the same again. That was how we did it. We planted corn, lots of it. We planted rice and lots of cassava to make flour. That's what we did. I worked a lot in my life. We also gathered palm hearts from where the reserve is now. We lived off the land. Planting crops is in our blood. It comes from our ancestors, our grandparents, my father too. They could all plant. Today it is difficult, but I still plant. It is in my blood, because our ancestors did it. And it's our culture, right? We still plant crops today. All this belonged to my grandparents. Over there they could plant food. They hunted, ate and lived from the forest. They hunted, planted and sold what they could. They took it to Guaraquisaba by canoe to sell. Cassava, rice, beans, potatoes, corn. They also raised animals to eat, chickens and pigs. My grandparents gave me home remedies when I was little. They gave me kina, a kind of tree, for stomach aches, articum and other fruits. I still remember. It was good. When I had a stomach ache, they gave me these remedies and it went away.
E uma das coisas mais importantes dentro da economia... One of the most important things within the green economy for big capital and big corporations which have an interest in green economy is the sale of environmental services. This means selling the carbon that is in the forest, selling the water that is produced thanks to the forest, putting a price on biodiversity and trying to do business with it. Who benefits? In the first place, the big corporations who until now have destroyed and destroyed the forest, building dams, building highways, operating mines, drilling oil, creating monoculture tree plantations. For them, the forest in itself was worthless. Then, some of them came up with the idea that the forest could in fact be profitable if they could put a price on it and do business with it. And this is the idea behind the green economy. There is another group that also has an interest in the sale of these environmental services, namely the big conservation NGOs. They have the idea which dates back a long time in the most industrialized countries in Europe and North America, that in order to preserve nature you have to remove the people, you have to build a fence around it so that only the birds, plants and animals remain. But excluding human beings from nature does not make sense. And that is because the forests that are still standing in the world have been conserved thanks to indigenous and traditional communities who live in these areas, who have always lived there and have used the forest for their own survival without destroying them. Because it wasn't in their interest to destroy the forest, since they depend on them and still depend on them to survive. Today, the most serious problems we are facing is that we no longer have the freedom to work. We used to work, we used to plant crops. Everyone had everything they needed. Everyone had food to eat. Not anymore. If you look in these communities for a chicken to buy, a pig to buy, to eat, there are none. This is not because the people have become lazy. It's because they can no longer work. They can't plant corn, they can't plant feed for the animals, and so they can't raise them. This is a really difficult situation. Even fruit crops like rice, corn and beans can't be planted anymore. It is extremely difficult because we can no longer work like we used to work. We no longer have the freedom to work. 30 or 40 years ago, the population here in Guaraquesaba was double or more what it is now because everybody worked, everybody was able to work. Families had 10, 12 children, but it wasn't a problem. It was better because everybody worked Everybody was raised working in the fields, but not today. When everything became prohibited, most people went to the city. They went far away. A problem we have now is the green force. A lot of them treat the fisher folk well but some of them come and treat the fisher folk very badly. Sometimes they throw their motor cranks in the water, they beat the fisher folk, they point their guns at them. We have a lot of problems with the green force. Our hands are tied, we have nowhere to go. If a fisherman can't live from fishing, he doesn't have the education to do anything else. They go to school until fifth or sixth grade and they start fishing. If a fisherman can't fish and has to go to the city, he will live a life of shame, living from garbage. Before we worked happily, but after SPVS bought the land, we couldn't work anymore. 
trabalhar. Então, pouco é água para o Cedro, para lá não tinha nada de coisa. Oh. Pouco... Some left to Cedro. There was nothing. Others went to Antonina. I'm the only one who stayed because people couldn't work anymore. I liked working, planting crops, making canoes. But then they prohibited everything and I couldn't work anymore. Then I retired and things got a bit better. Things got better because he retired, otherwise we would have had to leave too. I think we would have starved. The police came here several times. We often saw a helicopter. We had a neighbor who was scared all the time. When she was alone and the police came, she would almost die of fright because they wanted to grab her husband. They came and searched our canoe. They searched everything to see what you have. No, they have no future anymore, unless things start to get better from now on. My other son got married. He likes to work that way. He doesn't like to work as an employee in the city. He likes to work in the forest. Because he's done it since he was a boy, he wants to plant crops, he likes to work, but he's afraid, he's afraid to work. It's hard. Today people are living like others who already left. They can't work because the law forbids it. So what can they do there? They go to the city, although I've been told that it's getting harder to survive in the city, but in the forest it's worse. It's getting really hard to live in the forest. We don't have anywhere to plant anything anymore. We are planting crops here, outside the door. We can only plant on the river bank, nowhere else. The Kaisara are living like this, as you can see, without land and with the green force coming to bother us all the time. I plant bananas, potatoes, that's what I plant, cassava, corn. I have the corn, I just planted, it's so beautiful. But all hidden, all hidden. Today we live oppressed, we have to plant everything hidden. We're afraid of the authorities, we're afraid. In the old days we ate and nothing hurt. My grandmother is 88 and she was never sick. She says that at my age she had no aches or pains. Not now. At the age of 30 we already have pains here, pains there. All of that is because of our diet because we don't eat healthy food anymore. We used to hunt. Now, if you kill an animal, you go to jail. And they beat you, too. No, nobody can work. Nobody can do anything anymore. People here used to plant crops and live off of what they grew. That's how life in the country is. It's hard, the prohibitions. They don't let us do anything. We can't plant anything anymore, no rice, no beans. And we need to get our food from the land. But we can't plant anything because the green force comes. If they find crops planted, you go to jail. And so our hands are tied. What are we going to do? Starve because we can't plant crops. So it is hard. 
You can't catch fish because they are watching you. If they catch you fishing, you are in big trouble. They really harass us. We wonder, how are we going to live this way? We used to live that way, we planted crops and the forest is still there, preserved. It isn't us who destroyed nature, it wasn't us. It was the ranchers who destroyed everything. Wherever they went, they bought cattle and only the soil was left behind. And wherever we worked, look, it is all well preserved. So this is wrong, it can't be. How are the poor people going to live? This is where we are from. Go to the city, you have no profession, nothing. Here we know what we have to do to get food from the land. From my point of view, this is what is happening. We protect, we preserve all of the beauty that is out there and now we cannot enjoy it. There are people making money at our expenses and we are living in even greater poverty with no prospects for our children, for our grandchildren when they come. And the government, I can say, that is not doing anything for the poor, because the rich are allowed to destroy the forests, and the poor have to kill themselves, suffering hunger, poverty, hardships, living on the slums, going to the big cities without knowing what to do. There are things preserved there where the traditional communities are. When these traditional communities no longer exist, nature will also cease to exist. There is a saying that says, when the last tree falls, the last man will fall. I think that when the last man is gone, the last tree will be gone too. This is because one thing depends on the other. And because when people no longer exist, there is no reason for the world to exist anymore. Many people say that the children are the future of Brazil. I say, on the contrary, that Brazil is the future of the children. The community realized that it had to do something and so it organized with a few families that were left to create a camp. Then we got into contact with the landless movement, the MST, to see what could be done. So the movement began to assist these families in their struggle and the families began to identify it with the movement. They realized that they were also landless communities. The people had lost their access, they had lost their territory, and so they identify themselves as landless. From that point on, with this new identity and this new way of organization, the community began to show its resistance to these groups, mainly against the Green Force. And they also began to discuss a project for the community, a project for creating a settlement. They discussed the issue of agroecology, a means of producing food without polluting agrotoxins, without the use of poisons. And this is how a new model of production was developed, 
which was actually the same model the community used to produce food 20 years ago. So during this period, six years ago, the community regained its autonomy in terms of planting crops using the river, having access to the forest with no impediments of any kind. The green force no longer impedes the community from producing subsistence crops here from having its freedom. We can see that if that forest is standing, if it exists, there are also many families who are already there. And so if the forest exists, it's because of the relationship of attachment, of love between man and nature. With everything that the forest is able to produce, it can exist and feed the people what they need from it. We as a social movement are reclaiming this, we are fighting for this to show that it is possible for there to be human life in the forest, in the jungle. When the big companies come in, they make very nice looking products and then charge outrageous prices for them in the supermarkets. And the people who were born on this land and see it as part of themselves are being expelled from their own land by certain organizations. We are going to continue fighting to show that it does exist, that it is not a possibility, that it is a reality, that the forest is still there, very well cared for, both its fauna and its flora, by the people who live here and who know how to live in this environment. We are struggling. We are still struggling. If you go to a supermarket and pick up a tomato, you can't eat it. Everything is contaminated. Not here. Here it's organic, it's pure. You can simply pick it and eat it. I have no words to describe it. Everything here is wonderful. It's very good. And we work happily. Right, Mr. Paolo? We work with our physical labor. At my age, for example, sometimes when I plant something, I say, I'm only going to see it from heaven because I'm 71 years old. We don't work thinking only about money, we work thinking about life, because this plant here is life, isn't it? We work with a lot of pride, with a lot of love, because a plant is just like us, it is a life just like us. I don't only think about me, I think about the future of my children. If I had to work alone, I couldn't do it. But as a group, we are more than enough people to be able to work and to build. We can do our work and we can earn an income too. Women have more willpower. From my point of view, women have more willpower to work. So when we are working in the fields, we often say, joking, the Jose Lutzenberger camp is run by women. Our daily work is even nice to see. You can see the women are more skillful at working with plants. And it is also very enjoyable. And in our daily work in this group, we learn we get attached to each other, with our friends, with our acquaintances. We get very attached. It's really interesting. And then there are the things we learn. And this freedom is not only for me, it is for the young people too. I have three children and it is very good for them, it's great. Just looking at the forest is good for your health. That's why I told my husband, since my kitchen didn't face the forest, I told him to put in a big window, so that while I'm making breakfast, I can see the forest, because it is everything for us.
We work and it provides us with sustenance. It is our life. We have our friends, we converse to pass the time. It is very good, very good. This was an area where they raised a lot of buffalo and the buffalo destroyed the soil. So we opted to work with the agroecological system, the agroforestry system, which consists on working on the fertility of the soil and producing a diversity of food crops in the same space. Where there used to be only extensive grazing of buffalo, which caused serious impacts on the environment, the soil and the ecosystem, we arrived with agroecology, which is the opposite of the capitalist system. Where there used to be a single product, a single system of working, we proposed a new way of life for families, for communities and for the system. You start with garden vegetables and then move on to plants with a longer growing cycle, six months like cassava, bananas, taro. Then you plant fruit trees like jaboticaba and peach palm along with plants with a short growing cycle and plants with a long cycle. This ensures permanent production. Então vocês vão ter a produção permanente. Here we have an agroforest integrated with native bees. These are small forest bees that play an essential role in pollination and are also important to us for honey production. Para nós, ela tem um papel fundamental na produção de mel, né? In addition to the benefits for the agroforest, honey production is another source of income. Within an agroforest, grasses and herbs grow automatically. Chicken provide meat and eggs and also help to keep the system clean. The traditional model of agriculture tells us that the best way to work is by clearing the forest and planting a single crop, a monoculture. But we have centuries old knowledge of how the forest produces a diversity of plants in the same place and its production never ends, it's infinity. Some species are replaced by others and there is always a wide variety of food production. So the threat is not the people, the communities, but rather the conventional agriculture model that has been imposed, with the use of agrotoxins, deforestation and monocultures, replacing the forest with plantations of soybeans, eucalyptus or pine. That is the model that has been imposed, not the way that communities produce food. Here we have green manure, an area being rehabilitated with green manure. This is called mukuna, or velvet beans. It is a legume that produces a lot of organic matter for the soil. It produces biomass, or rather, it produces carbon. The multinationals use a forest to produce carbon, but we do it with the green manure with mucuma and other legumes that capture the nutrients of the air and put them into the soil. We are capturing carbon. But this is a project that enriches the soil, makes it fertile so that we can produce food, unlike the projects of the multinationals who use forests to capture carbon in order to sell it to the capitalist market. For us, the forest 
is our home. It is our way of life. The decisive factor was the organization of the community, the mobilization, and the fact that the community struggled and exercised its rights. If we have been able to achieve autonomy, if the children are now able to live well and we are free of persecution, it is thanks to the fact of the community organized, raised the banner of the landless movement, and that has made it possible for the families to remain here. Sentir meu amor, sentir, sentir meu amor 